So this week's video is on a drill, but it revolves around a focus I've put on the opposite hand. So I've joked with some of my athletes that if I had to do a TED talk or any novelty presentation on goalie coaching, it would be titled The Opposite Hand. But we'll save that explanation for another video, I promise. So the drill is to train the push and the pull that the opposite hand does in a high corner lunge. It also will both promote the goalie not taking that hand for granted, but also show how much the legs need to keep working after that explosion. We'll successively take elements away and slowly bring them back. If you have the time, the full set does take 50 minutes, but I've also done abbreviated versions of the set if the practice plan doesn't allow for it. Two laps, full high corner lunges. Do them one at a time, no drifting in between. Whatever level the athlete is at with the lunges, let them do these as best they can and just see if and how they're using their opposite hand and how effectively. It is supposed to aid them getting further and get them there faster. Two laps dry leading hand. Still 100%, but the leading hand has to stay dry the entire time. Side note we'll get into later, but don't let the leading arm's elbow go behind their torso. The focus is to force them to start using only what they do have, which is their opposite hand and their legs. Look for splashing on the push to go and splashing on the pull for recovery to get them back on the legs. Splashing means the hand is close enough to the surface. We say splashing and not whitewater because whitewater would indicate too deep and not as lateral. The cage is 10 feet by three feet. 10 is the bigger number. So just like the previous video about the ceiling, there's more emphasis on lateral movement. The splash on the pull is for recovery help to get your legs back underneath you. Two laps, dry leading hand, tennis ball pushing. Same focus as the last two laps. Now your pushing hand is simply not nearly as effective. This is nice because they still get to do the entire movement, but they then see if they were taking that actual hand for granted and wish they had it back. I thought of this tennis ball usage idea from my friend, Joey Gullickson, who would use these for field players as well. If you don't have a ball, hold your goggles or just make a fist. Two laps, dry leading hand, no pushing hand. Sounds difficult and it is. It's not glamorous either. Goalies can put their hand on their hip or behind their back, but instinctually I'll want to use it so I grab the back of my bathing suit for something to just to ensure I can't use my hand. Athletes can grab the back waistband or the hip edge of a women's suit if they want. If they are very disciplined, you just put your hand as a fist on your lower back. You learn to get as much as you can from the legs and then struggle with untangling your legs in recovery. You really wish you had your hands now for assistance. I make sure goalies try to stay squared as much as possible and not resorting to rotating on their back to recover. Two laps, dry leaning hand with two pound weight, full pushing hand. We're back to using our hands so we appreciate it more, well hopefully, but now you add a simple small weight, not heavy, just enough to refocus on still extending 100%. This honestly could be a one pound weight, a two pound weight, anything small in the hand. Two laps, dry leaning hand with weight, tennis ball pushing. You repeat the tennis ball two laps with the weight in the hand. Two laps, dry leaning hand with weight, no pushing hand. This is the top of the pyramid set and the most difficult. Again, make sure they stay as squared as possible without rotating on their chest or their back to try to recover back on their legs. These two laps are especially not glamorous and it is truly difficult. Make sure you're not drifting in between repetitions. Because it's not glamorous, it will look ugly and even doing it the best you can won't look pretty. So don't fret if you don't feel it looks good. The skill is elevating and exploding off your legs and getting lateral. So landing on not your legs is the skill. You're coming down, you're working on untangling your legs with no other help. You don't have your hands to assist you. 
that's the skill. Start going back down the pyramid each lap as things come back. Keep them focusing on using their opposite hand, especially as it feels good. With them, you can acknowledge that it should feel a lot better on this side of the pyramid going down versus on the way up when we're removing elements. The last two laps of full high corner lunges should look comparatively better than the beginning. Let them rest in between lunges and no drifting. It's still one at a time. With such a substantial video, I figure I'd put these examples together. These are all at 70% speed to see them a little easier. This is a bad example of them going too high, reaching over the what would be the crossbar, not going directly to the corner. This one, I am sinking. I'm not at all trying to give effort towards that work that skill of landing on my legs for recovery. This next one you'll see, I'm not turning my head. You want to turn your head and look at that block. This one I am turning my head, but you'll see it's not actually going to the corner where that ball or the block would be. This one I am not building up at all with my legs for any explosion. I'm just reaching and going over. This one is a great rep. But this is what I mean about drifting. I'm, I start two meters away for the next rep. This one, I am not staying squared. And you see that energy gets me to turn back. This one, my pushing hand isn't even staying linear. Uh, the splash and that thrust is going around me. This one, see, I land on my back just to, in order to recover. That one I'm landing on my chest, and then my recover hand is too deep. Combo here, I'm not looking at my lunge, and I turn my chest. This next one is difficult, you might not see it, but at the very end, I'm only pulling for recovery. My feet are way up at the surface of the water. This one I'm turning on my back to recover. This one looks all nice and smooth, but it's because I'm turning my back just to glide and recover on my back. That one is only a deep, heavy sculling hand, so I'm only recovering my hand. You see it looks like a scoop. I'm digging so deeply. Up and a big scoop. There's no splashing. From the side view, you can see this one. I'm landing on my chest and scooping deep into the water. Watch my feet behind me. I land on my chest and my feet are way up there. And this one I'm waving out, which provokes the rotation behind me. You see I'm opening up and splaying. This one I'm sculling. I'm not pushing at all. I'm only sculling up. So tread, 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 and I just a heavy skull up. Uh, there's Plus there you see there's just heavy white water at the end. From the side you'll see that I'm sculling. There's no splashing with the push. There's skull, 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 and reach. I want to put it all together and explode. And that's why focus is on a splash. I'm zooming in now on this hand, it's not very effective. You want the splash to explode. So that one, you see, I'm like chest down. I'm scooping so hard. I'm landing on a big, heavy arm. Reminder here, all this perfection, each rep matters because you're going to be doing so many laps and so many reps. This one, I go up, then I'm over. So I want that one to be one move rather than going all the way up with height. And then I try to reach as far as I can after going up. Instead of going up, then over, I want to stay compressed and go directly in one movement to the corner. Here you'll see I'm going over and then just waving up with no explosion out of the water. Stay tuned for the next video. I'm putting out these first few videos as exciting breadcrumbs for more to come, but we'll bring it back to beginner foundational skills that will also benefit elite goalies as well. Like, follow, subscribe, and share. If you're a coach, feel free to direct message any questions you might have.